Hey everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again today. And today I'm taking a look at a user request how to do a frugal install of Annex. Now, I'm on my, I'm going to do this in VirtualBox because it's easier to show the boot menus that way, but this process should work the same on regular hardware. So I'm going to crack open VirtualBox here. Okay, and I'm going to start up my uh, antics disk on my MX17 virtual machine. That's a fresh install, but that doesn't particularly matter. Uh, this I'm going to cover uh, two ways to do this. So anyway, I'm going to pop in an antics 64 ISO and go. <clears throat> so what you're going to see on the antics screen is to to start the frugal install. It's actually automated. It's pretty easy. Uh, you'll hit the F5 menu, or the persistence menu, and you'll crumb down here to one of the frugal options. Now I I'm a ner I'm a nervous Nelly. I usually use the static options because that doesn't mount all the file system, all the root, all the persistence files into RAM like the normal. Uh, the default ones do. I don't. I haven't given my virtual machine that much RAM, so I'm going to use the static. But if you're doing this on regular hardware and you really want to speed boost, let those suckers load into RAM with the default, uh, with the standard persistent ones. It'll be a big speed increase for a minor hit at boot time. It'll be a much faster actually running. Okay, so we're going to do frugal static, and then we're going to go. And it should start asking questions. Now, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to look for a frugal device on a, a device with a label of Annex Frugal. Now, if you don't care what your drive is labeled, you can label your drive Annex Frugal. If there's already a frugal installed, this boot will find it. So that's how you boot one without a bootload, without a grub bootloader. Our USB can do that and then hand off the boot to the frugal install. It's really nice, especially on machines that maybe don't have Linux installed, or maybe you don't have that Grub bootloader installed. Uh, you can still do it from the stick and still run it off the drive. You still got to have the stick handy to boot, which is a minor inconvenience maybe. Um, but <clears throat> once it's there, the thing will run, and you can take the stick out. Not a problem. So now it's asking me, since it didn't find one by one of the default labels, it's going to ask me, where do you want to put it? Looking for partitions with this much size, I'm going to put it on SDA1. Fine. Uh, do you want to change the label? No, I do not. Uh, so the default is no, so I'm good. Now it's going to install. This is really fast because it's just copying a, you know, 800 megabyte, 900 megabyte file. I forget exactly how big the file is. Then it loads that. Now it's going to ask me, the frugal install is done. That's it. <laughs> Technically, it's there. Uh, so what we're going to do now is set up the persistence files. For VirtualBox, I'm going to just let it take the defaults because I don't particularly care for this video. But you probably want to have a little more care in selection of your persistence files. I like to make them large enough that I can take a pretty big update from Debian because Debian updates tend to suck up maybe a gig in those persistence files. Eh, give or take, that varies. But um, I want enough space left on the drive for a remaster to work after a big Debian update. Okay. All right. So, so I'm going to give it a new password because now it's a persistent system. This is just like setting up a persistent live USB, uh, that aspect of it. And now we're going to continue the boot. What throws people is the fact that this, this frugal install does not install a grub bootloader. It just doesn't. Um, oh, here we go. we got Annex coming up here. It doesn't install a grub bootloader. So uh, if we want to do that, have that set up on our for the system, whatever system's already installed on your machine, if you want that to be able to boot the frugal install, we got to do one minor little tweak. Okay? And it's not hard. And in fact, a lot of work's done for you. So I'm going to boot back into that system that controls the grub. Let's see. Reboot. Now, it doesn't eject the CD after a and I forgot that. It doesn't eject a CD after a boot. So uh, I got must hit boot from hard disk. All right. So you can see my usual uh, MX17. And I'm going to eject the disk while I'm at it. Force unmount. There we go. You see it on our current grub menu in this virtual box, MX17 Horizon, that's the only thing that's on this system. The, the inst frugal install we just did doesn't appear. That's what we're going to do right now. We're going to make it appear, and it's really, really simple. Okay, and this should work no matter what your base system is. The trick 
is knowing where to look for the grub configuration. So I'm going to crack open Thunar, and I'm going to go to the root file system, and you see the, the frugal install is all in this folder. The entire frugal install is in here. Now you're going to see the live USB storage. This is the this is the stuff kind of like what the USB does. That's in a separate place. So even if you delete the frugal install, any files that you store in live USB storage are separate. They'll they'll be safe. But the entire system installs in here. You got all the you got the Linux FS file. That's the that's the main system file. You got you've got the root FS file and the home whoops and the home OS file. Those are the, the persistence files that were created. It's all in this folder. This is a great way to try it out because if you get tired of it, you just delete the thing and you're done. There's no fancy installation. There's no formatting hard drive. There's no reinstalling on the partition. Uh, the other system, the other system's still here. I'm running it. At any rate, I'm dragging, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot. Um, we're going to go into this folder and in this folder, in the, in the folder, here it is, grub entry. The frugal install gives you the boot entry. All you have to do is add this to your grub, and it's very, very simple to do that. So we're going to leave that file open, and we're going to go into Etsy, grub, D, grub.d, and we have a 40 custom folder. This is where you make the change so that the, the, the change is persistent across multiple times that you might update grub, like every time you install kernel, grub updates, okay? so. If we, if we define our new custom entry in this custom entry folder, that will always be regenerated into our thing. It's much better than just editing grub.cfg directly. For those of you that might say, why aren't you editing grub.cfg directly? That's why, because I want it to survive update grubs. So we're going to edit that as root. And the root password. There we go. And you can see it tells you what to do in this file. This file is an easy way to add custom menu entries. Uh, simply type the menu entries you want after the comment. Be careful not to change the exec tail line below, above. So no problem. Two enters. I'm going to select everything out of this one. Control C, Control V. Little save action here. That's done. Close that junk. And here's the one time you notice I have not touched the terminal. Unfortunately, I got to touch the terminal one time to run the update grub command. sudo update grub. My user password, there it goes. It's going to say it found some stuff. This is the default install. It actually doesn't check if the entry in the custom menu entry is, exists. It just adds it. Okay, So it's not going to tell you. You're not going to get any feedback here about anything in that custom, in that etsy.grub.d, that 40 custom file. you just not. All right, so now we're going to reboot. Ba -ba -bum. Whoops. I, I just minimized VirtualBox. Duh. Live video, my friends. Live video. There we go. So I'm going to. That's not it. There we go. So now we're going to reboot into the Annex install. So restart the virtual machine. Now I already popped the disk, so the disk is out. The original ISO that we use to do the installation. Grub's coming. And there it is. And look right there. Antic 17 Heather Hair Frugal install. All the boot options that we had when we started, so if you needed some weird custom boot options, those would be carried over, uh, including the frugal option, has carried over into this grub entry. And here we go. Now we're booting Annex in VirtualBox. And we're done. And that is how you do a frugal install of Antics or MX onto a system with an existing Grub boot entry and then that you can boot without the stick. Any other system, if you don't have Grub, you can boot from the stick, use the Frugal option again, it'll hand off to the Frugal install, and you're good to go. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to AnnexLinux.com or throw up a post at AnnexForum.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.